Welcome to the In Cultural Forum. Today we have with us Professor Tapti Guha Thakurta. She is the former director of the Center for Studies in Social Sciences in Kolkata and she is now a professor of history over there. She is here to talk to us about why the Durga Puja is becoming increasingly politicized. Uh, professor Guha Thakurta, you have done a lot of work on this. It's mentioned in your book as well in the name of the goddess. Uh, that the festival always had political overtones and political patronage. How is it different now? What has changed? Sure. Now, my book is called In the Name of the Goddess because I felt that so much happens in her name, which actually has nothing to do with the mere religiosity of the event or the fact of the fact that this is seen as an annual homecoming and worship. So what interested me about the festival, and let me briefly begin with that before I go on to thinking about um, its political life, and it's had a quite a powerful political life. Uh, my interest in it was that there was so much about this that in a way transcended the religious event, though Durga is the goddess. Uh, what is it that makes a religious event, a larger social, cultural and artistic phenomenon was my point of entry. So in this book itself, I was not pursuing so much the political life of the festival. In a way that was, you could say, a background theme, because the time in which I studied, I wanted to think about the contemporaneity of the festival uh, and how it was keeping up with changing tastes, artistic tastes, ethnic Taste. So you were making folk art villages and theme parks. Durga Puja Pandas were becoming like public art installations. And corporate sponsors were coming in, awards were coming in. The Puja was taking on a corporate commercial profile, so much advertising around it. In every sense, it spoke to its times. And it was as a corporate, commercial, non-religious, cultural phenomenon that I as an art historian got interested in it. And I was interested in, in what does it do to the category of art and craft? What kind of spectatorship does it draw on? It is an art event and yet it is unlike anything that happens in a gallery or a museum. So those were the interests with which I worked on the book. Since the book I've been looking much more on the Trinomo's deep investment in this, not this one Pujo, but in Pujos in general, but particularly Mamuta's use of Durga Puja almost as a way of defining a style of governance. So she runs the state like committees run the Puja, you know, so that her entire style of politics is about setting up pandas, lights, distribution, largesse, a public show. The Pujas would do it, you would mm -hmm. distribute things. Chief Minister sends her greetings for Eid. Turka Puja, Dipavali, Chhat Puja, the lot. Rakhi. So, Rakhi, so all festivals, but Durga Puja most. So the big sharp transformation was how the state got more and more. So it was, wasn't the party, the party became the state. So since 2011 into now, what we've seen is a steady way in which the Durga Pujas in Bengal became almost a state-sponsored event. Was it sort of in reaction to the claims made about her that she is appeasing the uh, Muslims? And that, did she bend over backwards or did she from no. the beginning? If anything, I think one of her ways is, and I think this is important to understand, she's always said, and there I have some sympathy for what she says, that the BJP does not understand Bengal. BJP does not understand what the essence of the Durga Puja is. That you cannot reduce Durga Puja to a certain Hindutva view of what the goddess means for Bengal. So which is why one of her claims is that leave Bengal alone, leave the Durga Puja alone. So her you could say almost interception and takeover of the Durga Pujas was not in the name of a Hindu religious festival. And I will say that with some emphasis. It was in the name of Bengal's biggest cultural event. So Durga Puja is to her a symbol of Bengaliness. And now that's becoming more and more an issue. 
that since the BJP in growth, she wants to refurbish Bengaliness as the platform and a Bengaliness that is religiously inclusive. So the Durga Puja, one could say, has involved the Muslims in many, many ways. The Muslim artisan was part of the making of the goddess, her ornaments, her hair. In the traditional household pujas, Muslim darzis were brought in to make the clothes of the goddess. It was part of a cross-caste, cross-religious, but the inner community of worship was definitely Hindu. The spectatorial community is a cross-class, caste and religion, and she's always said it. Interestingly, the para committee members have Muslim councillors. The mayor of Calcutta is a Muslim, Firhad Hakim. Mm -hmm. He's also the sponsor of the biggest Turka Puja and Kali Puja. Has it always been like that, the mayor sponsoring, the mayor well, promoting? No, the state was never so in, so in fact, under the CPM, when I talked to the mayor of Calcutta and they were thinking about, and that's my chapter on how do you discipline this event? How do you turn it into a more civic festival, thinking about saving the river from idle pollution, saving the trees from being cut off, sound pollution, you know, environmental pollution? How do you make blocking of roads, bring regulations on it? So this idea of trying to create a more regulated phenomenon, less unruly, more disciplined, your awards depended on your filling out all that you've cleared fire permission from the fire brigade, from the pollution control board, you did not take leave 10 feet of road space free, it was all important. So that was an interesting, so the state imposed restrictions, the state was seen to be, the Pujo often, committee people often said, the state is continuously intervening in a community event. So why should there be so many rules and restrictions? Let, let all civic rules go. Shubhrata Mukherjee said, this is a time when other rules don't apply. Festival mm -hmm. time is festival time. This was a mayor of the city saying it. Right. But another mayor also said, let me look at the Durga Puja as a form of disruption in the daily work of running the city. So I think there was the idea of a municipal governance of the event was important. You need police permission for every club pujo. You need electricity permission to set up your temporary line. So there was an attempt to, for the state to regulate it. But the state was not politically invested in it. And this is the distinction. Momota began to inaugurate as many as 500 pujas over, and she made a political statement out of it. So from 10 days before the puja, she began to inaugurate puja with great gusto. She began to give direct party donations to the uh, clubs. She started her own state award for the Durga puja. And her latest takeover was, she began a immersion day procession, which is like the Republic Day Parade. Nothing less than that. The Durgas parade and they give the last salute to the chief minister. And the fact that she uses the brigade parade ground where the Truxo, 75 pujas which have got state awards are paraded and it's meant to be a grand immersion carnival for the foreigners. This is something she's begun in the last three, four years. So the state in the name of a party's investment, not just in the administrative management, but in turning it into a state-sponsored event, event right. is a phenomenon that has happened under the Trinomul. And that is a transformation which I don't write about, but it's also what I've called a mode of politics where festivals are at the center of it. The festivals are key political conduits for local mobilization. You know, we see this happening in many parts of the country now, that the attendance in festivals is increasing in a big way. And we also find that the, um, the attendance is a bit more rowdy and they are allowed to do whatever they want. For example, the Kavar Yatra mm -hmm. in the north. Now, over there, there's more overt politicization. What is the possibility for Hindutva to actually so the way in which Mamata's personal, and it's really, 
she and she alone. We know that it's a one-woman populist party, but she has a strong sense of the populism of her party. It is a populism which relies on festivity, on a different form of mass communication, and a different understanding of secularism, which is not distancing yourself from the religious, but being equally involved with every religious thing. But does their patronage mean that the attendance is increasing, the popularity well, is increasing? Well, this is it. You see, the Durga Puja are being publicized. The media, the corporate sponsors are all involved in making this uh, what we may think of as a mediatized event. The media is everywhere. So even traditional things like the Sindur Kala or the Mahalai, everything has TV cameras all around it. Mm -hmm. So the scale the political patronage, the publicity, the, you know, already the, for six months before the puja, your banners begin to appear advertising different club pujas. Now the big change was every club puja that previously, and that was exciting for it, began to carry names of individual artists who designed it. Suddenly the artist was making a place. Now even if the artist appears, it's the political counselor whose name is most important. And what's important everywhere is Didi's face. A Durga Puja place is where there's a repetition of Didi's face, particularly through the Bisho Bangla award she gives for the Puja. Okay. The Bisho Bangla banners has Durga and Didi looking at each other. Didi now performs the ritual of painting on it in the eye of the goddess. She's artist. She brings the goddess to life. So is in a way, she, the goddess cannot exist. The goddess is found in her, not just her strongest protagonist and protector and champion, but almost like a uh, alter ego, so that Durga and Didi, the, the, and there are panels where Durga, I mean, where Didi appeared next to Durga with ten hands, but that was deeply criticized, saying we don't want, that was crude political, you know, iconography, but she's everywhere, her face is everywhere in the puja in panel. The now, till now, and this is the story we'll have to see, how far the BJP can make an inroad into this. Because this time, many of the clubs, one of the ways in which the governor of the state is usually a political, has been a political governor, including the fact that Bengal now has a new governor. Bringing the governor in is one way of bringing the BJP in. There's been talk about whether Amit Shah will come to inaugurate Bengal's pujas, and my heart has been sinking a bit hearing that. Uh, how far, so Didi will use, Didi I mean Mamata by the name which she's known, will use the puja as perhaps the biggest stage for showcasing, if one can say, her comeback. Whether it will happen, we don't know. But she's trying, since May 19, she's been trying to recover grounds. She's trying to build a new connect, because one of the big criticisms was the party ceased to have its Kedah-based connect. And that is where the BJP has been steadily building, at the rural level, less in the city, its Kedah-based. It's a different Kedah-based. So there's a different way in which she's trying to read, just like literally to say they went and captured Panchayat office, member after member defected. The Trinomul has been claiming back some of these offices. So the how far the BJP will so the only way they will do it is through the local committees. In a sense, did uh, Mamta Banerjee's government open the doors for this rivalry? Absolutely. I think you asked a very important question. You see, the festivalization of politics, which is what has happened in Bengal, that politics has been one of the prime popular representation of politics is through the club's organization of year-round festivity. And people say Bengal has no industry, Bengal has no other livelihoods. The festival economy is what is driving. Beautification, statue building, pavilion making is what is creating small livelihood through patronage. And the replica production that I talked about Mm -hmm. where the pujas is now happening around the year. So we have a big pen, we have a theme park, we have world monuments. There's round the year demand for statue making and pavilion making. 
that is creating livelihood. What happens to these pavilions, these statues once? Oh, for Durga Puja, they go into a recycling economy, they okay. travel. These are permanent beautification scheme and people are questioning in a state where the economy is foundling, why is so much money going in? And I argue that it is providing livelihood and it is a new visual field of populist politics mm -hmm. where what you're delivering is not just your Kanyashri program where every girl child is getting, you're also delivering pleasure the pleasure of recreation, beautification, and it's not for the elite, it's for the masses. She set up her own wax museum, her own theme park. Now, where the BJP will come in now, the BJP's inroads in the villages is very, very strong. In the city, it's because Mamata still controls the information and publicity, it's still her face everywhere. Yes, the Amit Shah and the other posters come in. So we'll have to wait and see. It will be the first, post-2019, the first Durga Puja is what, I'm no longer working on it, but I'm waiting and watching to see how it will unfold. So far, I think the club will hold its grounds. That's where the fights will also happen. But we know that some of the things, some of the controversies that the BJP brought that around a cartoon that showed Durga and her children treating themselves to a beauty treatment at Javed Habib's parlor. They said that was desacralizing. Nothing desacralizes Durga. Durga is used for alcohol advertisements, for computers. So Bengalis have a very different take. So this idea of the humanization of Durga, making her one of us. Mm -hmm. So a plywood company can say, let the joint family remain intact when they use Durga there, implying that the strength of things comes. Okay. So Durga is used by f for a World Cup, as I show here, the World Cup stars can go up and nobody considers this is desacralizing Durga. Would money power make the distinction between... Uh... Well, how, what the BJP... The, so the Javed Habib thing fell flat and I once said that Durga put up a banner saying, not in my name. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Can you eat chicken roll during Durga Puja? Of course, there's no culture of vegetarianism associated with Durga Puja. So there were things that a lot of the North India initial did not understand. So that really all the anti trinomul vote and there was a lot of hate because of this personalized style of politics, those who hated the trinomul, And that includes from the wealthy middle class to the poorest of the poor, turned their votes. So the voting pattern is not something it befuddles me what has happened, but people have voted en masse for, this, for the BJP, which is what has created not just an increase in vote share, but in actual seats. But how far the BJP will be able to mobilize the Pujo? For instance, they tried to bring about these Trishul marches during Ram Navami, during the thing, and they've clamped down. Uh, we never heard it so much as we heard it during this election campaign that she is appeasing the Muslims. So one story of the appeasement was that over several years, because the second Eid, which this year is happening in August, in the last two years happened during September and October. So they were often within two or three days of Durga Puja and the immersion. So she made it a point that on the day of Muharram, which they bring out their own processions, there will be no immersion that day. If necessary, you will push. So this became a way of that, why should immersion stop because of one religious communities? Secondly, the BJP wanted to compete with Muharram with their own procession with arms. After all, it's a day of victory in battle, the day of Durga Puja. So Ram features in the Durga Puja story only obliquely in the sense that the new timing of the Durga Puja is associated with Ram's battle with Ravan and he invokes Durga and Durga appears. So they said there's no tradition of any arms march, so she clamped down on all of it. There was also talk of bringing GST on some of the big puja committees, and she said they were trying to destroy, the central government is trying to destroy Bengal's puja. So that has been one of the things. They want to stop puja. They want to throttle Bengal. That has been her rhetoric, that every time they're trying to grasp the puja, bring new regulations, it's a way of you know, taking away from Bengal 
and Trinomul today is the biggest since it's a party which has no other following. So Bengaliness means Trinomul is the flag holder of Bengaliness and Bengaliness here you must say is not the National Register of Citizens Bengal. It is a Bengal that includes the Muslims and she actually that's the one thing she said that I, you can call it appeasement but I'm 100% with the Muslims and I'm 100% against NRC. And I said she at least has said it, right? Because any day what has happened to, Be to Kashmir can happen in Bengal because the law and order problem is such any day president's rule can be declared. They may not do it. They may wait till the assembly elections of 2021. So how far I feel, I mean, my political... <laughs> um, is it 50-50? I will not 40, know 60? this. So Sagarika Ghosh had once just interviewed me while she was actually doing the election trail, that who's, which is more important, Jai Shri Ram or Jai Ma Kali? And Amartya Sen has said that Jai Shri Ram is not something that Bengali say naturally, right? Ram is there, but Ram is not prominent. So Jai Ma, and Jai Ma Durga is not a slogan. Jai Ma Kali is not a slogan, right? So you don't say it. So there was a lot of talk to say that what is being politically imposed is a particular form of religiosity that is alien to Bengal. Bengal's way and Bengalis celebrate culture in a much more fluid, open and if we can use the term secular way, if we can use, the secular is now a denigrative term. Now Mamata has held on to all of that. Now she came under flack, you asked the question did she lead the way because for a lot of the critiques of her style of politics will say that look, the day you have allowed festivals, religious and otherwise, to take over the politics of the state, you've also opened out a competitive ground for the political, where the BJP has the same investments in the same cultural icon. So take a figure like Vivekananda, right. they're fighting over his festival. Right. Take a figure like, now Tagore they hate. So Tagore belongs to Trinamul and Bengal because Tagore said a few things against nationalism. Look at the way she took on the Bidda Shagar symbol, right? The smashing of the bus was the worst thing the BJP could have done. And I think the fact that they didn't lose, uh, that Trinomul was able to regain a lot, they say, is directly tied to this vandalization. So she's into using cultural icons in a very big way. And Vivekananda is not a Hindu icon. If anything, he's a reformist figure. So there are icons over whom there are battles, I mean, over a series of them. And she, what I'm interested in, is interested in icons across the spectrum, okay. from Ram Mohan. And so she's put up this thing of all the Bengali icons, which has Nazrul in it. Uh, it has Khudiram in it. It has many people in it. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you.